you can believe it, the new year is right around the corner. Cole Kublik, Simone Eli joining you for the first time since the final regular season game. Of course, Auburn falling in the Iron Bowl to Alabama. We have not even talked about that game quite yet. We will talk about uh, that heartbreaker at Jordan-Hare Stadium as well as preview Auburn's bowl game in Nashville this weekend as the Tigers take on Maryland. Let's go head to head. Welcome in, everybody. It feels like things are just flying by right now as bull season is well underway. Cole, I know it's a busy time for you, pretty much living inside of a hotel room right now. Uh, how was your <laughs> Christmas? It looks like the kids had a great time. Oh, it was wonderful. Uh, good to get a little bit of time off and then rode back into Birmingham, did the Birmingham Bowl before that, went to Decatur with the in-laws, and it was fantastic. I mean, anytime you get younger kids, Christmas morning's the best and the yeah. anticipation is the best. So, I think I got my first uh, wake up tap at 12:51 for my 6-year-old. So wow. it was a long night. Yeah, but it was it was a lot of fun. AM. AM. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Like, oh, wow. Is it time to go downstairs? It's like <laughs> nobody. We're um wow. we got a long ways to go. But yeah. It was awesome. It was it was a lot of fun. Christmas was great and bowl season now in full effect. So yes. as as we get it rolling. It certainly is. Auburn looking ahead to the Music City Bowl in Nashville. This is a game they've played in uh, quite a few times and so even more recently as well. They will play Maryland on Saturday. And Cole, right now there's a lot of excitement around this program, really, if you look back uh, just briefly on the early signing period, which has really become the main signing period, so to speak. Uh, Hugh Freeze delivering on what he said he wanted to do when he took this job, which is to bring in top talent as the Tigers currently have a top 10 recruiting class. And, and I think you get one of the best receiving classes in the country. And that's obviously a deficiency of this football team has been for most of the year. You're going to have multiple guys at that position that are going to have a real chance to come in, not just play Simone, but come in mm -hmm. and, and have an impact and be, yeah. be guys that get significant snaps and maybe be playmakers. So mm -hmm. I think addressing needs and maybe not as reliant on the portal as they were last time around, which I think is good. You, I mean, you want to build it with young talent that you can develop that'll get extra time in your system and there. There's still, even though there's been a couple guys say they're going to go to the NFL and a couple guys hit the portal, I think you're still going to have a lot of players that gave you good snaps and played a lot of meaningful snaps for you this year. They're going to be back next year. Uh, when you go through bowl season, Cole, how crucial and important is it for this team just to still be playing? Because there's so many teams that are at home right now, and it really seems like invaluable experience, not mm -hmm. only for the guys who are currently on the roster, but also some of those early enrollees who are getting to kind of be going through bowl activities and kind of see what things are like early on and just getting those, that extra time together. I can't, even, I can't imagine leaving high school right around Christmas break and then be practicing with a team the next week like that, that would just, but that acclimation process would be so valuable to just yep. have an understanding of where your position group goes, what they do when they go there, how to go through your daily fundamentals that you're going to do almost every day of practice and then mm -hmm. get some legitimate work against guys that have played college football, high level college football to be, to get that head start going into spring and then to be already ahead of the game when you go through spring and then head to fall, it's got to be valuable and it's going to be something I know already in the past that's allowed a lot of kids to be ready to play at a younger age. And, you know, it's I, we talked to Brent Venables, Oklahoma head coach today, and I was asking him with all the roster movement, we've heard for years that, oh, bowl practice is so important. You get, sure. you know, 12 more practices, 15 more practices, whatever it is. And he said, it's, I said, it feels like it's almost more important now. And he said, there's no doubt because you've got to get other guys ready to play. Yeah. And with so many guys moving on, they'll have that legitimate opportunity. And you have to have the guys that you know are going to help you next year, get those snaps, get those reps and begin to be acclimated to real college football. So it's great for Auburn as a program to be there, not only playing in the game, but just sure. everything that comes along with it. Before we jump into uh, game prep and talking about this matchup, let's look back. I know it's been a month ago and Auburn fans don't want to relive this, but that Iron Bowl game uh, was just unbelievable. You think about how Auburn ended the season, back-to-back -back losses to New Mexico State and then to Alabama at home. Cole, I know you were there with your family. I know how special of a time that was for them, uh, but – I think that just everyone in college football was stunned with how that game unraveled there in the fourth quarter. It was, I mean, the, first off, the atmosphere was one of the best that I've been in, period. Yeah. Anywhere, any place, anytime. And I don't usually label Jordan Hare as one of my toughest places to play because it wasn't that for me ever. It was, okay. I never had to deal with the noise. Um, 
It was the first college football game that I've taken my children to. It was the first Auburn game that we have been to as a family. They were at the A&M game last year, but I worked that game. Sure. So for them to witness that environment, you know, it's it hasn't, I'll be honest with you, Simona, hasn't bothered me as much. I've had a lot of teammates and friends and Auburn fans like text me and oh, like two weeks later, still can't get over it. I hated the fact that they lost the game. I hated the way they lost the game. I hated yeah. losing to Alabama. But I also felt like I witnessed my children falling in love with Auburn football, like on that. the spot in person. Yeah. And so it wasn't – that made it a lot easier to deal with for me. Sure. But – and then the fact that, you know, I pretty much told my six- and eight-year-olds to make sure they watched the last play because they were going to remember this the rest of their life. And then that happened. Yeah. Um, and had to deal with an eight-year-old that was ugly crying after the Aww. game and try to talk her off the ledge. But, yeah, it was – um it was an awesome day either way, yeah. but yeah. they uh, what they dialed up in the run game was really cool. It was it was unique in that they did it with fewer formations. Mm -hmm. And Coach Freeze is someone who usually does things with a lot of formations. They dialed that down, but they changed their reads on certain plays throughout the course of the game, understanding how Alabama would fit it. And then when they corrected, it went back to a different way. It's a really smart plan. And there were so many plays left on the field in that game. I mean, mm -hmm. so many balls that were underthrown, a couple of massive drops in yeah. big moments. Um, and then just opportunities that, you know, you you have the percentages to be able to get stops and you don't. So, uh, I mean, you come down late in that game, you you know, you kick a field goal. We had a ton of momentum running the football to be able to get down. Sure. You know, that was one. And there's just I, I think back to so many different things that could have helped change the outcome of that game. I never believe that a game is decided on one play. So people are going to point to this or that, whatever. I don't, I don't believe that. I know better than that. Yeah. Um, but there were just, there were a large handful mm -hmm. of plays that you, you can look back on and say, wow, that one could have made a massive difference. But the fact that they went out and competed the way that they did with the team that's in the playoff that won the SEC, that says a lot yeah. that, that they can have that team ready and they can put a plan together the way that they did. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. Uh, there, again, no moral victories, of course, especially when you play in the SEC. But to see how Auburn battled Georgia, to see how Auburn battled Alabama, and to know that uh, Hugh Freeze has only just begun, and he's really just beginning when it comes to getting his talent in the door. You have to imagine that that was a little bit of fuel for the fire for this program now going into the postseason and into bull prep. Not that it's in the back of their minds every single day, but there has to be some belief that, like, okay, you, you get to end it. You have an opportunity to end it right. on, a, on a more positive note uh, in a season where there were a lot of positives despite kind of the transitional period. Sure. And I, I think I never really believed that, oh, you win a bowl game and you get all this positive momentum going into next year. But I do think collectively it can all begin to add up and sort of snowball yeah. and really push you into the next season. Um, you know, Auburn didn't have the bowl game last year, but some of what was happening in the portal – and the announcement of Coach Freeze built a little bit of momentum. Now I think you can take, okay, you're competitive with Alabama. You had this great high school signing class. You go win the bowl game. You add all those together, and it really does start to give you a little bit of momentum heading towards the next season. So I don't, I don't ever just look at a bowl game and say, oh, they won that game. They're going to be really good next year. Yeah. It's when you compound multiple things that are taking place, and then you can probably sit there and say, all right, there's real momentum behind that program going into the next season. I think Auburn has a chance to grab some of that. Yeah, as someone who didn't always love the bowl hoopla, I guess, just the games and in, in, in kind of the everybody gets a trophy thing, when you do see what it is like for programs to win a bowl game and kind of the special unity that happens in the postgame celebration, I do think that there's a place for it. I think that it's special for guys to be able to go and have that opportunity. They've certainly earned it. And so I've certainly bought in more to bowl season than maybe I once did back in the day. But uh, Auburn will play Maryland on Saturday uh, in Nashville, the Music City Bowl. And Maryland will not look like the team uh, necessarily that Maryland has looked like week in and week out for the last several years with Talia Tungavailoa uh, under center. He's the all-time leading passer, I think, in Big Ten history in terms of yardage. The guy's uh, really, really got an incredible arm. He has opted out of the game, Cole. How does that impact this Maryland team uh, in this game? I think it affects him a lot because you mentioned it, over 11,000 passing yards. He's been super productive, but – it's his playmaking ability as well. Um, you know, he can he can throw on the move. He can escape pressure. He obviously knows what to get you in and out of at the line of scrimmage. Yeah. And just that understanding of having seen pretty much everything that can be thrown at him is now going to be gone. You're talking about Billy Edwards starting at quarterback, most likely for Maryland, a guy who 
is I mean, four of ten for two yards on the season. So, wow. I mean, I, I I don't know if you look at that and say, okay, let's put the ball in his hands. We have a lot of confidence in what we're going to be able to do. Sure. Even though you have a solid receiving core, a good running back core, a pretty good offensive line, but that's just – you're not able to run your offense the way that you want to, mm-hmm. be it tempo, getting to the line of scrimmage, adjustments at the line of scrimmage. Things will have to be dumbed down. Things will have to be simplified to the point that are going to make things much more difficult. Cole, when you look at this opportunity for Hugh Freeze and company, what do you think maybe the goal and maybe the strength of this team is right now going into this game? Where's What's the mindset, so to speak? Of course, everyone wants to win, but is there something specific that you think they're talking about or discussing in this locker room right now? I think it's just finishing finishing on a positive note, having you know, finishing above 500. Those are all things, I mean, let's be real. People look at seven and six, then six and seven, a very different way. And it's yeah. really only a one game swing, but it's just the reality of it. You had a winning season, you had a losing season. So sure. uh, I think that's a big portion of it. The strength of this football team right now, I would still say running the football. And I would actually include Peyton Thorne in that a little bit. Yeah. Not because he's a dynamic runner, or I think he's going to go run for 150 in this game. But I think his decision-making in the run game has made a big difference. And he – had to read different things in that Alabama game throughout the course of the game, and he handled it extremely well. So him being able to manipulate some of the mesh, some of the zone read stuff, some of the option plays, RPO plays, has really improved, and that is going to open things up for Auburn to be able to run the ball traditionally. Then you have a good stable of backs led by Jarquez Hunter, who I think are some of your best football players. So I would say the ground game is still the strength of this Auburn football team, even though it's not a line-up, run-right-at-you type rushing attack, but how they've managed it where it's grown late and with what's going to be gone in the secondary, you know, DJ James – uh, Nehemiah Pritchett going to be out. The, the, I thought the secondary, when this game was announced, it's like that's a great matchup for Auburn because Maryland's going to throw the ball. Yeah. Auburn's secondary can match up well. You're down a couple. Keontae Scott's coming back. You'll have to move some pieces around on the back end. No Marcus Harris up front. So I would probably lean right now to where that Auburn rushing attack, probably the strength of the team. One thing that Hugh Freeze said before we get to our predictions, I want your thoughts on this. Um, I mean, he obviously knows what what's going on inside, what conversations are being had. And he believes that Peyton Thorne is the answer for this team in terms of this quarterback room. And he thinks that with the right pieces around him, uh, that Peyton Thorne can flourish in this offense. Do you see that playmaking ability? You just alluded to it. He has been able to do more later in the season, and not only on the ground, but in the air as well. And uh, is he, is he going to be the answer, you think, for the Tigers moving forward? Yeah, in the air is still going to be the big question mark because the, I have a lot of question marks of how, where maybe his ceiling is from that perspective in this offense, but we have seen him improve in other areas. Yeah, And he's shown that he's athletic enough to be a runner that can break a defense down. He's made better decisions. He just has to get more comfortable with his timing and his accuracy and get a couple of receivers, let's just be honest, that can help him. Yeah. Because there have been plays across the course of this season that were not on him, whether it just be dropped or whether it's a ball that a lot of other receivers in this conference would have gone and been able to come down with. He hasn't had a lot of that. And Auburn hasn't had a lot of that this year. So I think you're in a situation right now, Simone, where some of these head coaches have to make decisions on, if I go attack the portal for another guy, what is that going to disrupt? It could disrupt confidence in my donors as it pertains to NIL. It could disrupt my – Uh, It could disrupt our high school signing class, which had a quarterback coming in there. We don't want to lose him because if we lose him, do we lose some of the receivers? So you you have to be really careful when you're out and not just become, I guess, you know, somebody who is a professional, you know, talent grabber. And you're just, you know, accumulating as much talent as humanly possible. Yeah. Because then guys are going to get pissed and guys are going to leave and guys are going to be upset. People are going to be frustrated. So I do think there's a part of Hugh Freeze that says, I don't want to, I want to disrupt as little as possible of what we're building because I feel great about that. And I do still feel like there's room for growth with Peyton Thorne. And if we either go out and spend an exorbitant amount of, because the price tags on the portal quarterbacks right now is pretty ridiculous. No doubt. No doubt. they're, They're all asking for way too much and they all still, some of them still think they can get it. So do you play that game or do you just say, we'll wait, maybe we'll allocate those funds to something else. Or hold on to those funds to when we have a guy we really think we can get and we want, and then we'll push it there and make a big splash for everybody involved. I don't know what the answer is or what the real thought process is, but I do think that there 
there's still some confidence in what Peyton Thorne can become in this offense. Yeah, that's a, it is a wild time right now in college football. Unprecedented times that I truly never thought that we would see in terms of what the NIL and what Transfer Portal has uh, just really unveiled uh, about this sport so far. Uh, let's talk about predictions, Cole. It'll be a 1 o'clock kick at Nissan Stadium in Nashville. Auburn has been practicing at Vanderbilt this week. We know they will play Maryland on Saturday. Uh, what do you like about this matchup, and how do you feel like it's going to look on the scoreboard? I still feel pretty good about the Auburn secondary with Keontae Scott coming back. You'll have Jalen Simpson, Zion Puckett on the back end. It's a good group of receivers. Jay Sean Jones, Ty Felton, Caden Proctor, all three over 600 yards receiving. They've combined for 15 touchdowns receiving this year. But you're without your most flexible tight end that Maryland does use a lot in a lot of different places. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the fact that there haven't been any real hits at linebacker for Auburn, and you're going to have guys like Eugene Asante back who – can diagnose because you'll get a ton of movement, a ton of formations. Coach Loxley is going to shift those pieces around, put them in different places. You'll see receivers in, in the backfield and they'll motion out. Tight ends will be wide and then they'll come attach. So you'll get all of that from this group. And you've got to be able to get lined up correctly and have an understanding of who is what and where they're going and why before you can even pretend to stop a play. But I think Auburn will have some success running the football. Um, now, you know, Bo Braden is one of the better safeties in college football. He'll be a big-time NFL prospect next year. You've got an active group of linebackers. Auburn's got to find a way to win the line of scrimmage. And this is a group that plays hard up front, both offense and defense. They're not more talented than Auburn, per se, yeah. but they do play hard. <clears throat> and I think as long as Auburn protects the football, they should be able to win this game. I think it'll be a lower-scoring game. I'll probably play the under if I was on this game, but I don't see Maryland being able to be multidimensional. I don't think they'll be balanced in this game. I just don't see the passing attack being one. Yeah. that's going to be really scary mm -hmm. for Auburn, even though you're losing your best pass rusher in Marcus Harris. You still have Keldrick Falk, who's been coming on as of late. You know, he's a guy that I think needs to have a big game. They've got to find some individual pass rush wins because there are times that Maryland will allow for different pressures and stunts to be able to turn free. That's why Talia had to run as much as he did. Sure. And so if they can find a way to make that happen against an inexperienced quarterback, got a good chance to get the ball back and win the game. I like Auburn to win the game. I'll say, I'll say 24, 21. Yeah, I'm close. I got 28 to 14. I think that uh, Maryland will, and it's going to look interesting to not have Talia Tunga by the way. I don't think that anyone really knows what that will look like. Even Mike Loxley himself, but we'll find out. On Saturday, all we know is that it is a huge opportunity for Auburn to end the season on a very positive note after a couple late losses there, but a lot of momentum for Hugh Freeze and company going into the offseason when it comes to just making a bowl game and also this recruiting class for 2024. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in to Head to Head. For Cool Cube, I'm Simone Eli. Have a great day.